Hello, I'm delighted to welcome you to the launch of the Year 9 Preferences process at Longsands Academy. In this presentation, you will hear from me, Ms Gordon, Assistant Principal, and Ms Bingham, Head of Year 9. The transition from Year 9 into Year 10 is of key importance in a young person's education. Students begin studying GCSE courses at the start of Year 10, which continue through until the end of Year 11. The Year 9 preference process is likely to be the first time in a student's education that they are able to express a preference about some of the subjects that they study at school. The purpose of this presentation is to review the national picture of the curriculum in Years 10 and 11. We will explain how the preferences process works at Longsands Academy. We will outline the next steps in the process along with a timeline of key dates. And most importantly of all, we aim to enable students to make informed, thoughtful and mature decisions about their preferences that will enable their future success. The government has undertaken a major overhaul of GCSE qualifications in recent years. As you may know, new GCSE courses have been phased in over several years with the first exams in these new qualifications in the summer of 2017. All GCSEs are now linear in structure, so that examinations are taken only at the end of the course. This will mean that examinations are mainly taken in the summer of year 11. The content is also now more challenging and rigorous. This means that more curriculum time is required for each subject. So students will study eight or nine GCSEs in total, depending on the pathway that they follow. Internal assessment or coursework has largely disappeared and is used only where it's needed to test essential skills and in a small number of subjects. As a result, students will set a far greater number of exams at the end of the course. It is also worth being aware that there are now extra marks available for spelling, punctuation and grammar in most courses. With the reformed GCSEs, a new grading system was introduced. Instead of grading GCSEs from A star to G, GCSEs are now graded from nine to one, with nine being the highest grade possible. The new scale allows for anyone, for example, an employer, to see easily where a student has taken a new or an old GCSE. The scale is also designed to recognise the achievements of high attaining students as the additional grades allow for greater differentiation. The two grading systems are not directly equivalent. However, as you can see from the diagram, the bottom of a grade seven is aligned with the bottom of a grade A. The bottom of a grade four is aligned with the bottom of a grade C. And the bottom of a grade one is aligned with the bottom of a grade G. Under the new system, a grade five at GCSE is recognised as a strong pass. When students are thinking about year nine preferences, it is helpful to think further ahead beyond year 11. Students must stay in some type of education or training until they are 18. But after year 11, they will have the option to choose a pathway that's more specific to their interests. For years 10 and 11, the government has focused on ensuring that the curriculum remains broad and balanced to give students a rounded education up to the age of 16. The breadth that is maintained in the curriculum means that students have a range of pathways available to them in the future. The core curriculum is studied by all students. It includes two GCSEs in English. Students study both English language and English literature. GCSE Maths is part of the core curriculum, as is GCSE Science. I will talk more about science on the next slide. You can see that students will study five or six GCSEs as part of the core curriculum. In addition to these GCSE subjects, all students will have one lesson per week of core PE and personal development lessons are delivered throughout the year in much the same way as in year nine. You can find out more about the English and Maths courses by watching the relevant subject presentations. The Maths presentation also has information about two other qualifications in Maths that some students are eligible to study. 
there are two routes available for GCSE science. These are combined science, which leads to two GCSEs, and separate sciences, which leads to three GCSEs. Please watch the science presentation for further information about the two science routes, including information about the selection process that the department undertakes to decide which route is most appropriate for each student. In addition to the core curriculum of five or six GCSEs, students study three further GCSEs or equivalent vocational courses, which make up the preferences curriculum. Given the additional rigour and challenge of the new GCSE courses, we allocate three hours per week for each preference subject. This is to ensure that students have sufficient time to study the course to the best of their ability. For preference one, students select from either history or geography. For preference two, students select a language. And then for preference three, students select from a range of additional subjects. A lot of these subjects will be familiar from years seven, eight and nine, but there are some subjects here that will be new to you, such as business studies, child development, geology and media studies. Please do explore the information provided in the preferences booklets and the subject videos to learn about these subjects so as to ensure you're able to make an informed decision about your preferences. For a small number of students, an alternative curriculum pathway is considered to be more appropriate based on factors such as the student's prior achievement. This will be indicated clearly on the letter that has been sent to parents and carers. I'm now going to hand over to Miss Bingham for some advice and guidance on how to go about making informed decisions about your preferences and the next steps in the process. And say so year nine, how to make the right choices for you. Think about your strengths and weaknesses. Remember, you have two years of study ahead of you and it's really important you choose subjects that you enjoy, but also that are keeping your options open for the future. Have a think about what you are good at. Do you like practical subjects? Would you miss them if you weren't doing them? How do you find extended essay writing? It's worth considering a balance of subjects because it is a challenging time at GCSE and it's all about striking a balance and getting that right. And this is why you shouldn't be choosing subjects. Remember that your friends are not necessarily going to be in your class, so do not choose a subject because your friends are taking it. Do not go for a subject because you think that it is easy or that is your perception. Maybe you've spoken to older students who said that they find it easy. Remember, it is you that you are choosing for, not for others. There is a big step up from year nine to GCSEs. What you assume to be easy might not actually be. And finally, it is highly unlikely that you will have the same teacher for GCSE that you had in year nine. So do not base a decision upon a teacher that you liked or disliked. The departments across the academy have prepared some videos which you hopefully find will address any questions you may have about the subject at GCSE or indeed address any misconceptions that you may have. Please do take your time to watch and listen to the videos to help inform your decisions. And so informing us about your preferences please follow the link in the letter which will take you to a Microsoft form where you can complete your preferences. Please ensure that your name, your tutor group and your preferences are indicated on there. There is a comment box where if, for example, you have an additional language that you would like to sit at GCSE, you can inform us of. And so to the important dates left in this process. As we have now informed both yourselves and the students, the next important date to note are the parent consultations, which will be held remotely on Tuesday, the 22nd of February, 22. You will be receiving a link on how to be booking those appointments. Use that time to speak to your teachers about your suitability for their subject at GCSE and also to ask any questions. The deadline for submission for the preference forms is Monday the 28th of February.
Year nine, it is an exciting time to be taking the next steps in your academic life and either experiencing new subjects or working in more detail in the subjects that you are familiar with. We know it is a big step up to GCSEs, but it is also an exciting time. Take care, take time to make the right decisions. Use the information we have provided for you. Speak to your parents and carers and get advice from teachers. We look forward to receiving the forms back by the 28th. Good luck.